At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Honorable Les Bronte was elected to the Beverly Hills City Council in 1994 and served as mayor in 1998. Mr. Bronte was appointed to, to a second term in 1999. He brought many years of practical experience as a business executive and community leader to the city. Mayor Bronte served eight years on the City Traffic and Parking Commission from 79 to 1987 a graduate of California State University, Los Angeles, and owner of a textile products manufacturing and importing company. I remember Les as the main person helping the CR CPR program of Beverly Hills survive and flourish. The Honorable Les Bronte. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Well, I must tell you that my mayorship started off very exciting. Because that's the time the Beverly Hills Police Department decided to pick it. So that night in the tent on the Crescent, there was all the police, the men on the, all departments were walking with picket signs because they wanted a raise to 3% at age 50. Well, sort of that was, it was passed, but not after a lot of uh, talking on, on my council. And it today is accelerated beyond that. That's just what you need to do to keep these wonderful men and women at, at a par with what's being offered. We're sort of in an auction mode, and it does actually impact our, our financial stability. But I was very fortunate because I got to serve with some wonderful people, Alan Alexander, Vicki, Mark, Tom, Linda, and Marilee Goldman. Now, Marilee Goldman and I were just sort of like the Rowan and Martin or Mutt and Jeff, whatever it was. And we had the best time, and actually, uh, I had the greatest respect and love for her. But when it came time for banners, she and I put on a show that we were going to take on the road. Because with her talent and, and my economics uh, background and make sure that things don't cost, it really took a lot of council time. But she, she, we had a lot of fun together. I, I do uh, want to talk about Vicki Reynolds because that was my proudest moment on the city council. As mayor, I stood on the steps of the post office and received the key to that magnificent building. And the right thing to do was to hand it to Vicki Reynolds, because as Marty pointed out, she was responsible for that. I told her tonight that I was going to mention it was truly my, my proud moment. The, the other things that I was fortunate to be involved with were uh, really just trying to cut back city expenses. And I found that commissions uh, were there in name only and not in productivity. We sort of cut back three commissions. Of course, they've impacted their back again in different modes, but the, because they realize the, uh, the importance of community uh, input. I want to thank uh, Don Elman Garber for creating the CPR program. I think you'll feel very good, Donna, that last year that program trained over 5,300 people. And it's the goal of that organization to, you know, thank you. And it's that goal to make sure that every student, before they graduate Beverly Hills High School, knows the life-saving skill of CPR. So I thank you very much for making that possible. And Meals on Wheels is still cracksing along. <laughs> there are still the people here in the community. And uh, if anybody would like to be involved, I'm, I'll be in the back of the room after the meeting. Uh, I. Uh, I thought that maybe uh, I should give you some of the other high points, and, and this is, being on the council, you get wonderful opportunities. Uh, someone t uh, talked about being with royalty. I, uh, my council was able to sit and talk with the King of Jordan, and this was in the uh, in year 2002. And even at that time, uh, the bulk of the conversation was dealing with the impact uh, of the Middle East and what it's done. And ladies and gentlemen, it hasn't changed. It's still there today, and it's truly a tragedy. Uh, the, uh, I, I want to congratulate Alan Alexander because I, uh, I found him one of the most knowledgeable men when it came to getting involved in projects and really determining the, the, the cost. And, and when we had these meetings that lasted to one or two in the morning, I'd grab Alan and I'd take him out in the parking lot and I said, let me buy you a cup of coffee so I can, you can tell me what you really said because he was so smart and it just went over my head but I, I, I blame him for all the successes in our community because of his fiscal responsibility. 
That's what you told me to say. It's right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can read my handwriting. Huh? Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how many of you know that we almost lost one of our treasures, the treasure being the affair in the garden. And it came out in a, a strange way. It was, it sort of came up in the holiday period when we had the menorah that was at, on, on, on our public right of way, and there was a legal, a legal impact on that. And the council labored with that for many, many months to how to make this possible. Uh, have the menorah up, and if we allowed one organization, we could allow every organization to have his or her symbols or whatever it was. And the council worked uh, aggressively to try to come up with a program. And then we said, you realize whatever you do is going to apply to we the city, because if you're going to restrict, then you're going to have to uh, do the same thing to the affair in the garden. And a scheme was devised where we, the city, purchased the the, uh, the, all the display items that are used in the affair in the garden, and it became city property versus private property, and we restricted it. Yes, we do still have the menorah, and I think it's up for 48 hours, and the affair in the garden lives on, and I was pretty proud of, of the council for making that, that possible. Uh, as many of you know, my, my sort of theme in life uh, is uh, the safety of my community, of course, family and friends, and I might tell you that Ed talked about what we did. We I was the first uh, to have scanners, and we would uh, listen to scanners, and he'd call me hours hours the night, we got to go to Santa Monica and Doheny. And sometimes we got there ahead of the police department because he would monitor. And then the, the, the chief at that time would say, uh, Mr. Brown, Mr. Bronte, uh, you, you realize that you're in a zone now where there's an active shooter. It didn't seem to stop us, except the city manager told us what we could do with our scanners, and uh, we sort of lost uh, the rights, but now we're part of the disaster communication group, which actually serves the community as a civilian group, and we are honored to do so. Everything from the marathon to the Golden Globes, it's just part of the community uh, center. And the, the other thing that I'm proud of is 1500 on the AM dial. Now, maybe you all don't know about it, but we have our own radio station in Beverly Hills, and it broadcasts 24 hours. And other than you know, in the event of disaster, you will, you will know from your police chief, your fire chief, your person in charge of our emergency preparedness, what to do, where to go, where all the disaster supplies are. So if you want to listen to that, it'll talk about track review advisories, and every mayor has access to it for you know public service announcement. But it's been an honor to serve all in your community. I continue to, to do what I possibly can in my limited hours, uh, and uh, I... I love all of you, and I love you, and I, I want you, please, to continue to support us. We have bumps in the road, but we are survivors. Thank you all for being here. The Honorable Mark Eggerman was elected to the Beverly Hills City Council in 1997 and re-elected to a new four-year term in 2001. Mark served as mayor in 2001 and 2004. Mark Eggerman has practiced law for over 50 years, specializing in real property law, a graduate of UCLA Law School being first in his class in 1966. Mark was also the senior editor of the UCLA Law Review and was awarded the highest law school scholastic honor, the order of the Coif. Coif. Thank you, Mark. I remember Mark and his wife, um, Dr. Lynn Eggerman is starting the search program in Beverly Hills. The Honorable Mark Eggerman. Thank you. First, let me thank Marty and Ira and the Historical Society. It is an honor and a pleasure to be here. I, I do have to thank one other person who's on the panel for being here because I wouldn't be here without him. Uh, Alan Alexander, in his last year in office, picked up the telephone and said, I, I think we should have breakfast. And I'm figuring, why? I had no idea. Uh, I believe we went to the Hamlet in Century City, if my memory is correct. And over coffee, Alan said, you ought to think about running for council. And we had a long discussion for about an hour. And uh, he's a very persuasive gentleman and a very good friend. And I wanted to give him his due because I would not be here but for that breakfast and Alan's <laughs> suggestion and guidance. Um, 
One of the things that is remarkable in serving, uh, mayor just has one vote. It's the same vote as every other council member. And he gets to be the face of the city maybe for a year. But you do not accomplish anything without your other fellow council members. And I was truly blessed. I, I served with seven of the greatest, most intelligent, most dedicated people that I have ever met in my life. Four of them could not be here. That's Vicki Reynolds, Marilee Goldman, Steve Webb, and Tom Levin. And we've heard some stories about three to two votes. Uh, on our council, it was a close call if it was a four to one. Uh, we really had a relationship that enabled us to exchange ideas, to reach compromise, and to reach decisions that all of us could comfortably live with and be proud of. And uh, my service with these outstanding individuals uh, marks eight of the most enjoyable, memorable, and finest years of my life. So I want to thank the three of you that are here and thank the four that could not make it. Um, we had a great, exciting, very, very busy time all across the board. Um, we were well into getting back into the water business. Um, reservoir at Booster Station 2, rebuilding cold water, uh, attacking infrastructure, digging wells, the water treatment plant. So we were very much into infrastructure and a lot of development occurred in that area. Uh, Marty mentioned the CERT program, Citizens Emergency Response Program, that was formed when I was mayor the first time in office to train our citizens what to do in a true emergency, how to help people. This is not, this is not uh, first aid, but we have a part of that course is evaluating people who are injured and categorizing them and helping the fire and rescue services that will ultimately come to their aid. Uh, in the city center, new lighting system, new street lights, the implementation of the urban design program where we widen our streets, have mediums along Rodeo Drive, upgraded and implemented a plan by Palazzotis, an architect that we had consulted with 15 years earlier, but never acted on his plan. We acted on it, we implemented it. Les had mentioned Vicki Reynolds as one of the driving forces in the acquisition of the old post office, which is now the Wallace Theater. Vicki led us in that effort. She was tenacious, she was successful, and the result is one of the finest public performing structures in all of the United States. So this is for Vicki. We developed the Crate and Barrel Project, spanning Beverly Drive to Cannon Drive. And it was my council that did the Montage Hotel. Two of my collaborators that put in a tremendous amount of time on the subcommittee was Les and Linda, and I remember distinctly one day, uh, I don't know whether it was Les that couldn't make it or one of the other subcommittee members, but we were short. I picked up the phone. And I, said, Linda, you gotta get your uh, <clears throat> down here immediately. She said, well, I just got back from working out at the gym. I said, I don't care, I need you here. She said, can I shower? I said, no, I need you here now. <laughs> and she was there in four and a half minutes and the negotiation process continued on. And as a result, we have not only one of the finest hotels in the world, but we have a public garden in the middle of our business triangle that serves this entire community, I think, very, very well. If I had to focus on a key single memorable event, uh, unfortunately, it would be September 11th, 2001. I received a call from Frank Fenton, our treasurer, who was also a stockbroker, so he was always up early. <laughs> And he said, Mark, you gotta turn on the television. You gotta turn it on now. Got up. The first tower had already been hit. I watched in horror as the plane flew into the second tower. 
Didn't know what to do, but I knew I had to get to City Hall. I went to the police department where we have our emergency center. Uh, we have a center there that is uh, used to coordinate operations when there's a high level of emergency. Captain Bill Hunt was in charge. I asked him, I said, Bill, what do you want me to do? He said, well, it would be really helpful if you could take the council members as they arrive and keep them in the council chamber. I said, so you want them out of your hair? He just smiled. He said, that would be very helpful. There was an outpouring in the community of our citizens wanting to do something. We thought possibly the donation of blood, called the Red Cross, had a lovely conversation with the woman in charge, and she basically said, Mayor, I will send you a truck if I have to, but we are overwhelmed with donors, and if you can please not do this, I would appreciate it. We will get more blood given the volunteers we have. And so the issue was, what can we do? And what we did is we came up with a community gathering in the Civic Center Plaza, a multi-denominational service representing Jews, Christians, Muslims, for the people in our community to say, we stand together. We stand with New York. We stand with the victims. We are one people. We probably had four to 500 people appear and participate. And what it showed me was that this community is really a microcosm of the best of America. We are one people when it comes to a crisis. We do stand together and we stand for the best values in this world. And that would probably be my most defining moment of my eight years in office.